I will wait on the Lord, who hides his face from the house of Jacob, and I will hope in him. Isaiah chapter 8 and verse 17. Ahaz, as we saw it last week, rejected God's help to overcome his enemies. And sadly, the people of Israel suffered because of the king's bad, bad decision. See, they didn't want to listen, so they had to learn the lesson the hard way. My name is Rudy Vivanco, and I welcome you to lesson number four, entitled The Hard Way. Today we are going to study the, uh, the book of Isaiah, and this is the series that we are on, Isaiah. And uh, today we are going to study the second part of the book of, of chapter 7, actually, and also chapter 8. We will learn precious lessons of life. And I want you, I want you to stay tuned till the end because there are beautiful jewels that we will harvest from the Word of God. Let's pray together. Our Father in heaven, in the name of Jesus, we pray for your blessings upon this study. In the name of Jesus, we pray for your Holy Spirit so that we may understand the truths that are revealed in chapter 7 and 8 of Isaiah. Bless us, Father, please. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. A principle that we, we find in chapter 7 and 8 of Isaiah is that the Word of God always, always fulfills. And we will see that in Isaiah chapter 7 and verse 16. This verse will tell us the prophecy that God that will be fulfilled. Isaiah chapter 7 and verse 16 says, For before the child shall know to refuse the evil and choose the good, the land that you dread will be forsaken by both her kings. In 734 BC, the word of God foretold that before the child would be able to speak clearly and to distinguish between good and evil, the kingdoms of Israel and Syria will no longer exist. And this we found all this we can find it also in Isaiah chapter 4, 8 and verse 4 and Isaiah chapter 7 and verse 16. Again, Isaiah 8, 4 and 7, 16. Now, what, what's interesting is that two years later, in, in uh, 732 BC, Syria was conquered by the Assyrian Empire. In that moment, Isaiah's son was less than one year old, and he could only babble. Twelve years later. This is history, friends. In 722 BC, Isaiah's son was able to make decisions. Then the kingdom of Israel was destroyed by, by Shalmaneser V. The Israelites were deported to Mesopotamia and Media. And this is corroborated by 2 Kings chapter 17, verses 3 through 6. Friends, the word of God was fulfilled. Because when God has spoken, his spoken is, and that event will come to pass. Another principle that we find in Isaiah chapter 7, the second part of, the, of, of this chapter, is that uh, when we disobey God, there are consequences that we will receive. Look what Isaiah chapter 7 verse 17 says. The Bible says, The Lord will bring the king of Assyria upon you and your people and your father's house. Days that have not come since the day that Ephraim departed from Judah. God had promised that he would destroy the kingdoms of Israel and Syria himself. So Ahaz didn't have to do anything about it. However, Ahaz disobeyed God and formed a, an alliance with Assyria. And even worse, he worshipped Syria's gods because he believed they were more powerful than God. What was wrong with this king, you, will, you may ask? And this you will find in 2 Chronicles chapter 28, verses 22 and 23. 2 Chronicles 28, 22 and 23. Therefore, because of what Ahaz did, God sent Egypt and Assyria, the flight and the bee, um, quoting from verse 18 of Isaiah chapter 7, he sent Egypt and Assyria against Judah. He, he used Assyria as a hired, quote, hired razor, end of quote, to destroy the kingdom of Judah. And this is found in verse 20. Friends, friends, we should always, always trust God. 
Because bad consequences inevitably come when we reject God and rely in people alone. And this is what Psalm 146 and verse 3 confirms. Friends, when, when decisions come to our life, instead of relying on yourself, on your power, instead of relying on other people, instead of re relying on traditions and old customs and habits, why don't you, why don't I rely on the Lord alone? And yes, th these people were supposed to be destroyed because they went against God. And when you go against God, you are giving up the privilege, privilege of being um, a, a child of God. And you are also giving up the protection that God offers to his children. But these people needed to be destroyed. They were to be destroyed, but they continue being God's people. Because though you have rejected and you have rebelled against God, you are still a child of God. It's just that you have renounced to the privileges that come along with it. Look what Isaiah chapter 8 and verse 8 says about this, about the destroying, the, the partial dis destroy, um, destroy that these people, God's people were to experience. Isaiah chapter 8 and verse 8, and we already moved, as you see, to chapter 8 from chapter 7. This is what the Bible says. He will pass through Judah. He will overflow and pass over. He will reach up to the neck, and the stretching out of his wings will fill the breath of your land, O Emmanuel. See, God asked Isaiah to write down the name of his next son before witnesses. Although her wife had not conceived yet. And this is found in Isaiah chapter one, uh, chapter 8, excuse me, in verses 1 and 2. Like his other son, and you might remember this from last week's study, Shear Jashub, this child, this new child in chapter 8, was to also be a, a sign. Uh, and his name was Maher Shalad Hasbaz. And Maher Shalad Hasbaz means speed the spoil, hasten the booty. Spill the spoil, hasten the booty. And this is found in verse 18. So the name of this, the second son, like the first one, was another prophecy that needed to be fulfilled on the people of God. This was a warning. This name, Maher Shalat Hasbaz, spill the spoil, hasten the booty, was a warning. Assyria will conquer the lands of Syria and Israel. However, Tiglath, Pilatser the third came like quote the waters of the river end of quote and went further. He destroyed the land of Judah too. However, God was merciful because he's he always he's always merciful. So God led him this this Tihlad Pilatser the third. He let him quote reach up to the neck end of quote quote. Only. So Judah was not completely destroyed. Judah was not completely destroyed because the remnant, a remnant, was saved. And remnant is simply were simply those who were still faithful to God in, in spite of the king and the majority going against God. They were not then completely destroyed because God is merciful and he's faithful to his people. So, so you hear about this God, and of course, this is a God to be afraid of, you may say. What are we talking about? We need to see the difference between being afraid of God and fear, fearing God. Let me, let me take you to the Bible for this concept. It's found in the same chapter, Isaiah chapter 8, and we are going to move to verse 13 now. Isaiah 8, 13, the Bible says, The Lord of hosts, him you shall hallow. Let him be your fear, and let him be your dread. God advised Isaiah not to do what most people do, not to be afraid of what most people are, and not to fear what most people fear. This is found in the verses 11 and 12 of, of Isaiah 8. Friend, God is the only one we should hallow, meaning we should obey. God is the only one we should fear, meaning respect. God is the only one that we are to obey, hello, 
God is the only one that we are to respect. Fear. This is this is based on, on, on Isaiah chapter 8, verse 13, as you may understand. And God is the only one that, that we are to even be afraid of. Verse 13. Now, this is a fair question. How do we fear God? How do we fear God? We truly fear God by acknowledging that He is the supreme power of the universe. That's how we truly fear God. Now, if God, the supreme power of the universe, the most powerful being in the universe, is with you, listen, friend, nobody can hurt you without His permission. This is good news. If God is with you, nobody, nothing, can touch you without His permission. The other side of the coin, though, would teach us that if God is against you, not because of his own decision, but because you have rebelled against him, then if God is against you because of your rebellion, then you should be afraid of him. I want to read from early writings. This is page 60. This is a beautiful quote about this uh, very, very part of the study. This is what the quote says. Our minds must be stayed upon God, and we must not fear the, the fear of the wicked. That is, fear what they fear and reverence what they reverence, but be bold and violent for the truth. Could our eyes be opened, we should see forms of evil angels around us, trying to invent some new way to annoy and destroy us. And we should also see angels of, of God guarding us from their power. For God's watchful eye is ever over Israel for good, and he will protect and save his people if they put their trust in him. Now, chapter 8 brings us to another important principle, and that has to do with lies. And I want to call it just the way they are to be called lies. Now, the principle that we find in, in Isaiah chapter 8 and verse 19 tells us that we are not to believe these lies. And I'm going to bring you there now to verse 19. Isaiah 8 and verse 19. The Bible says, And when they said to you, Seek those who are mediums and wizards, who whisper and mutter, Should not a people seek their God? Should they seek the dead on behalf of the living? So here's, here's the questions. I, I want you to think about these questions. Should not a people seek their God? Why would you look for mediums and wizards? Why not looking for God instead? Why not seeking for your God? And the other rhetorical question, should they seek the dead on behalf of the living? Why would you seek the dead? Why would you ask, ask the dead instead of asking the living? Do you, do you hear the rhetoric in the questions? See, friends, most people in Judah, in Ahaz himself, followed a religion based on idolatry, divination, and worshiping the dead. Most of them were doing this. And that's why the rebellion. They were, they were having a, really, a mixed religion now that had idolatry, divination, and worship of the dead as part of it. All these went against, quote, the law and the testimony, end of quote, of God. And this is found in verse 20. What is sad is that these kind of beliefs are still around today. Idols may not be worshipped openly, but our culture is full of beliefs about the dead communicating with the living and deciding or foretelling their future. You see this everywhere. Even the movies teach you that. And what is sad is that we believe so. We believe this. Spiritualism, modern sorcery, and the New Age have spread this message all around. Friends, dear friends, dear friends, we must base our beliefs on the Bible alone and reject those subtle lies firmly. Which ones? This divination, this idolatry, this worshiping of the dead. We need to reject these lies firmly based on the Bible. Why? Because by rejecting them, we are taking the sight of God. Listen, friend, you need to understand, I need to understand that rejecting these lies is a matter 
of loyalty to God. Let me end this study for today, or for this week, by a quote from this devotional, This Day with God. This is March 14. The writer says, Every individual must seek by earnest prayer to know the Word of God for himself, and then to do it. In all your temporal concerns, in all your cares and anxieties, wait upon the Lord. Put not your trust in princes, nor in the sons of men, because they may be in positions of trust. The Lord has united your heart with Him. If you love God, if you love Him, and are, and are accepted in His service, bring all your burdens both both public and private to the Lord and wait, wait upon Him. Now it's time for you, friend, to share this message with everyone in your family, in your contact list, with your friends. Let them watch this and may they get prepared and informed because hard, harder days are ahead of us and we need to be rooted in the Word of God. May they understand that God is looking for them. And if they take a side, God's side, they will be protected for what is coming. Share. Like this video. God bless you. And let's pray together. Our Father, we thank you for giving us the privilege of having access to this word. Having access to this, your, your book. We thank you, Lord, for chapter 8 and 7 of Isaiah, where we have um, learned so much from. We pray, Lord, that now the new or even fresh knowledge that you have revealed to us will be accompanied by your power so that we may be able to apply all these into our daily lives. I pray for my friend. I pray for each person that he has heard and watched this video. May we all be found at the end on your side. We pray all this in the wonderful name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. God bless you. See you next week.